minute limit. Mark Rathless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy uh, Speaker. Uh, my party believes in an NHS free at the point of use and funded out of general taxation. Um, I support much of what is in this uh, motion uh, today. Um, I, I too would question just some of the sort of outsourcing, it's not quite clear whether it's outsourced or the hypothecation of how much the mansion tax may raise, or it's outsourced to whatever the Conservatives happen to be spending. But I believe we need to decide what's the right amount to spend on the NHS and commit to that, rather than simply say how much the Tories cut or increase, it should be 2.5 billion more. Should we, we should make a, a decision as to what the NHS needs and fund it properly, and I support the principle of joining up adult social care with the NHS, and I think the Shadow Secretary of State makes a persuasive case for a single budget. I, I give away. Can he tell us what does he think it tell what does he think it tells us about his leader's instincts that he said, I think we're going to have to move to an insurance based system of health care. What does he think it tells us about his deputy leader's instincts that he said he wanted to congratulate the coalition government for bringing a whiff of privatisation into the uh, NHS. The very existence of the NHS stifles competition. Doesn't that prove that ordinary people who rely on the NHS cannot regard UKIP as being in any sense on their side? Uh, it proves no, uh, uh, nothing of the sort. Uh, the Honourable Member faces a very strong challenge from UKIP in his uh, constituency, from the excellent uh, Bill Etheridge MEP. But um, the, party, the policy of our party is de no, 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 I will answer the point. The policy of our party is determined by our party as a whole. We are committed to an NHS free at the point of use and funded properly out of general taxation. I personally may, may, may I continue, please? I, I, I personally um, come from a mother and a father who met in the NHS. The NHS and supporting it is in my blood. I believe in the NHS, as I have described it, and I would appreciate the, the courtesy of people accepting the sincerity of what I say on that. The issue with funding the social, social care budget, I, I'm pleased to see that the Shadow Secretary of State is still in his seat as he's been throughout this debate, but it is a moving, moving target what that budget is. We know the local government settlement for the year ahead, but not beyond that. We don't know what either a Conservative-led or potentially a, a Labour-led government might, might be able to or might choose to spend on local government and what proportion of that would be allocated to public health budgets. So it strikes me as a, a significant risk without greater clarity and, and on that to say that is what the budget will, will be plus this sum of, of 2.5 billion which is the one that the Shadow Health Secretary and uh, his party has selected irrespective of what the baseline is. I, I will give away. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'd like to thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way. C can he be absolutely certain that his views on what his party uh, might or might not do, should they ever unfortunately get the position of propping up a particular government, can, can he assure us that this road to Damascus conversion is actually the whole party's view and not just his in particular individual view on this? Uh, yes, I can give him that uh, assurance. It is the view of my party, it is the view of the whole of the party, and it, is the view, uh, and it is my own personal view that is core to my politics and what I came into this House to represent. Now, the Prime Minister said earlier that, uh, about me that uh, he comes to this House week after week to discuss the NHS in Kent. So I will, will follow up. Uh, uh, what I may describe perhaps as an endorsement of my, my approach from the, from the Prime Minister and raise some of the issues we've been seeing in, in Medway. Um, one issue I, I find also difficult with the motion is there's, there's no mention at all of the GP contract coming in in 2004. And I do believe that is a, a significant driver of increased uh, demand for uh, A&E services. And in Medway, where we have a, a significantly higher proportion than... Uh, average across the country of single-handed GP uh, practices. The, the, the burden of that out-of-hours care falls largely on an organisation called uh, MEDOC, and while I would encourage constituents to, to use that where appropriate rather than going to, to A&E, I have one or two concerns about how it operates. Um, like the 
the Honourable uh, Member for um, Wirral, Wirral, Wirral South. Um, we had a, a young child who was, was ill, and we, we sought an uh, appointment. My, my wife call, calls up Medoc, and we're off an appointment at a particular time, but then told the, uh, the wait will be an hour and a half. And we said, well, if the wait's an hour and a half, why don't you give us an appointment an hour and a half later than that which you've just given? Uh, and no, that wasn't allowed, and we had to go and wait for an hour and a half, and that was the procedure, and that was the way it had to be. And although you know, we, we, we thought that was the appropriate service and, and we went there, I would understand why other constituents in the circumstance might decide, well, I'll go to A&E and I'll, I'll take my chance there, and it may be that one, one is even seen quicker than that. And it's so important that out of our service, in our case, Medoc, is flexible and responsive and is operated to make it an attractive and appropriate alternative for A&E, uh, a point I will be developing further with the Clinical Commissioning Group when I, I meet with them on Friday. Uh, yes, I, I do. To the Honourable Gentleman giving way, as we share the same hospital in Medway, will the Honourable Gentleman join me in welcoming the extra £13.4 million given to the a &E, the £6 million extra given to the hospital for the winter period, and the additional £10 million given to the CCG to help improve the local health area? I, I absolutely do, uh, do welcome those, those sums. I, I, I press strongly for them, and I was delighted most recently, particularly with the £13.4 million to rebuild the A&E, which I think is a essential and I'm now campaigning for, in, in support of what the hospital wants to do for a further uh, approximately £20 million pounds, uh, to build an, and arrange an emergency village, they describe it, of short-stay medical wards around the a &E to support, support that and better throughput of patients through the, the, the hospital to improve the, the quality of care. Um, the, the issue I, I've also worked with the hospital on and, and, and seen is efforts to try and make sure that, that patients are more appropriately referred rather than coming through A&E. If a GP is referring a patient to hospital for a known issue, um, surely that, that, that patient would be better going to an appropriate ward than being sort of pushed through A&E, which is not an appropriate environment when someone's already been assessed very often by the GP and it's known what the issue is. Similarly with patients who suffer from dementia, um, a and &E is rarely the right in, in involvement. Anything that can be done at the nursing home or with GPs, possibly with GPs based, uh, based alongside the A&E, to actually assess quickly and move that person uh, to an appropriate treatment area rather than have them in A&E, has to be supported. And uh, I, I, I'm pleased to do that with respect to Medway. I, I also am um, very, very pleased that a, a decision was taken to move from the so-called STAR system in the Medway A&E, where the idea was that someone would be assessed by a senior clinician before it's decided what would be done, yet that wasn't happening in a sensible timescale, and that's now been replaced with nurse-led triage, uh, which I think is, like, is going to be a better system. I'm also grateful to the support we've received from other hospitals, notably the Homerton Hospital, which is an excellent A&E department and where Medway has benefited uh, from secondments. It's important that those secondments and that support is sort of integrated into the permanent staff within Medway Hospital, and uh, the clinical director le lead for emergency med medicine is, um, is key. Um, we've had extra consultants appointed emergency medicine at Medway Hospital, which of course I strongly, I strongly welcome. Um, however, one issue I, I do raise is that the terms and conditions of emergency doctors, because it's an incredibly, dema extraordinarily demanding uh, specialty and um, doctors working there rarely have the opportunity um, to take on private work, which I know is a consideration for some, but not all doctors, when they make their choice as to specialty. And in order to encourage more doctors to come into this field, I just raise as a, a question, should we consider changes to the uh, lockstep sort of consultant sort of contract so it's possible for doctors in an extraordinarily demanding area of emergency medicine uh, perhaps to receive more in terms of pay than others who are in not as extraordinarily demanding specialties where some may be attracted also by the potential to make private earnings in those areas that they can't within emergency medicine. The Secretary of State tells me what's actually required is more holidays for A&E doctors. That may be so, but that in turn would require pulling more doctors into emergency medicine so there'd be greater colleagues for cover for colleagues on holiday. And I just question a system where we have 
very, very high rates that are given for agency staff for a day or for, 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 for a week, and hospitals, perhaps where there are problems in the A&E and there's difficulties attracting people, they can fill them with those staff by paying very high rates, but that doesn't necessarily gel as a, a, team, as, as a team or support in anything but the short term, and we do need to make emergency medicine attractive for doctors to come into. Uh, finally, on the issue of Monitor and uh, CQC, Meadow Hospital's a foundation trust, was made a foundation trust on largely a box ticking and financial exercise under the previous government, ignoring the uh, death rate one in ten higher than it should be referred to by the Honourable Member uh, for Gillingham. And while Monitor, I think, has been reasonably sensible in its approach with Medway, it's not able to come in and run the hospital. We have to look to the board uh, to do that. Similarly with the CQC. I think it's made some sensible interventions, for instance, on A&E, but in 2012, it said that Medway is a good hospital meeting all its standards, when I believe many of the problems we now see were in place then, but not identified by CQC. And uh, my party wants to, to replace some of these alphabet soup of uh, bureaucracies and regulators, I, I can't get away, I'm afraid, uh, monitor and CQC uh, with uh, directly elected health boards that we believe could oversee these things better.